with this being the 60th anniversary of the founding of the company by Mr. Sidney Pritchard in 1946, we needed a special event to put on for the August bank holiday weekend. And it's, it was an obvious conclusion to draw that uh, why not make it the Pico Diamond Jubilee celebration weekend? We had a selection of live steam miniature traction engines chuffing about the site. It created great interest. And we had a Team Valley jazz band on stage um, at, our, at our garden theatre. The children's entertainment over the weekend. We had cream teas on the terrace, so piano music. It was a lovely weekend and the weather was extremely kind to us. With rise of night and lips as bright as flame. Tangerine, oh, and she dances by it. Senorita step and careful little sigh. And I have seen, I've seen toast of tangerine. Raised in every bar in the Argentine. Well, we had a variety of special events. The first ever Pico model rail show. We had uh, a lot of guest layouts. Uh, layouts that have been featured, especially in the Railway and Continental Modelers, Railways of the Month. Yes, it's a Great Western town terminus set in the late 1930s, built by a chap called Dennis Higgins and featured in the January Railway Modeler of this year. I bought it from him in April. I, I've added some personal touches of my own and I'm in the process of building an extension to go on the other end which will be a, a wharf with some ship models, which is my other interest. I'd sold my previous layout when I moved house and didn't have room for the big layout I had both before, so that's now in the care of a club in Minehead. And I missed having something to play with while I built another one, so this was advertised. I had admired it in the modeler, and when it was advertised, I snapped it up and uh, you know, went and picked it up. And it's been sitting in my garage ever since. It gives me the chance to play trains again. It's, it's worked very well indeed. It's Pico track, um, Pico point motors, you know, so it's, uh, it's very reliable, so it transports well. Any mistakes have been mine, not the fault of the layout. Albion Quarry evolved in my mind from a desire to mix two hobbies. I've Apart from a lifelong interest in model railways, uh, a more recent interest, probably more well, recent, 15 years, has been geology. It comes of perhaps living in a house which is built of stone. How did the masons make it? Um, and then finding out more about the Portland work. Uh, Portland stone, the best stone in the world for building construction. And finding um, and making a model in, in uh, bringing that and the model railway together. Uh, initially, thought Portland Stone is only found in Dorset, but it isn't. Through my contacts in the British Geological Survey, uh, I was able to find out where the most northerly outcrop of Portland was, which happily was uh, suited me being, as it's close to Bletchley and with a heavy interest in LMS and LNWR, uh, it was easy to create a tale of a, a, perhaps a branch line from the Bletchley-Oxford LNWR line down past the quarry, perhaps going to Aylesbury, but now only left to uh, service the quarry. The period has been set uh, just after the Second War. There's now a high demand for stone uh, because of the rebuilding after the Blitz. So it's working hard and hopefully it uh, emulates what perhaps may have happened in that area if the stone had been quarried. I have a friend on Purbeck who has a 
it still has a working quarry there and it goes back many generations and in spite of modern equipment lingering in odd corners there's still some old stuff which suited my period so I was able to copy that into the model. The, uh, the crane on the layout, in fact there are a lot of cranes, uh, some are made up from pictures I've seen of something similar, the travelling cranes, but the Scotch derrick that's in the quarry is copied again from a British Geological Society photograph of a typical crane in Portland. The um, quarry railway is operated in fairly simple means. Uh, full wagons come from an off-scene quarry and then the locomotive runs around and takes the full wagons into the works where hidden from public view they are removed and replaced with empty wagons which are then returned to the off-scene quarry. The branch to the quarry is operated as a pickup goods setup whereby the a train will arrive, wagons for stone are shunted within the works uh, and then the train is rearranged to get the locomotive and the guards van at their respective ends and it leaves. <laughs>